Hello students and other viewers, welcome to today's class. In the last class we discussed the home tab, but today we are going to be talking about writing formulas, the formula tab and the insert tab. Okay, we hope that we will be able to write formulas and plot graphs when, at the end of this class. We hope that we will be able to see how we can turn off automatic calculation and turn on manual calculation. We'll be able to show you how you can know all the formulas that all the cells that contain formulas in your worksheet. We'll also be able to we'll also discuss the insert tab and you should be able to draw charts, insert pictures where necessary, insert text box, and then insert your headers and footer. These are um, the things we hope to achieve in this class. So without wasting much time, let's open the program we are using, which is Spreadsheet. Okay, this is a spreadsheet package. And today we are going to try to solve a question. And by solving that, we'll learn all this. So the question is also on screen now. You find the question on screen. It says, you are the accountant of an ICT-based mall with the name Data Processing. You are an accountant of an ICT-based mall with the name Data Processing. Okay? Now, create a table using Microsoft Excel. Create a table using Microsoft Excel. Merge the first 12 cells on the, on the first row. Merge the first 12 cells on the first row and type in data processing ICT more okay now let's be let's I've done this already so that we don't take much time in this video but with these questions I will refer to them so this is it this is it now the first question says create a table using MS Excel Microsoft Excel so if you look at this this is an Excel program and now merge the first 12 cells on the first row and type in data processing. Now I've done that already, but you can count the cells that have been merged. I've taught you how to merge in previous class. Now let's just count how many cells were merged in the first row. Now A, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, these 12 cells were merged, and after merging them, we typed in data processing. Okay, good. Now, the next question is saying apply the cell style good from the template. Apply the cell style good from the template. Now, they gave you instruction to apply the cell style good. So, how do you do this? You simply go to your home tab. We did this before. Now, on, why, after selecting the cell we need to work on, go to cell style and then apply good. So I applied good and it reduced the, um, the font. So I highlighted this again, increased the font and then made it bold and that was it. Okay, good. So I have succeeded in uh, answering the first and the second. Now the, one, the next one is... On the second row, type in the following into each cell. On the second row, you need to follow instruction. This was the first row and this is the second row. Now on the second row, type in the following. So you have to type in serial number, which I did, the name of the product, the product ID, the section, that is, remember this is the mall, the name of the product you, you, you bought and you want to sell, the ID, how you identify or how the computer um, was programmed to identify that product. The section, is it on the phone section? Is it on the computer section? Is it in the canteen? Is it in the office? You need to, we need to know the sections where these things are. Now, how many was supplied to you? How many did you buy in bulk? Now, what's the unit cost of one? So these are the things we entered. Now, the quantity you sold, if you bought it on the 1st of June and today is 14 or 15, you should know how many you have sold and the quantity that have not been sold, then the, to the total amount, that is the amount sold, then we will also look at percentage and then comment. 
okay so we have succeeded in doing the next one which says you should enter this in the second row now the next one is type in serial number and 10 names of products also assign them appropriate section and give them product id of your choice so this is an example of it on this serial number they say you should have 10 names so serial number simply means one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that is what i have here one to ten good now give different names of product you feel are appropriate in an ict mall good so you can have the laptops the iphones the webcams the scanners the printers the projectors the red you can put as um, many as 10 or if you want to go further you go further but let's use 10 for as a case study so you put in the name of 10 products that you sell in that mall and then you assign various IDs the IDs um, you can just figure out any combination and be consistent with it and like here I'm using the name of the product and attaching the numbers at the back so you should be able to think of um, IDs to assign to this one. Then this section, you can see what I did here. Under laptop, laptop belongs to a computer section. Under the iPhone 3, phone section. Under the webcam, webcam is usually associated with computers. Under the OTG, OTG cables are on-the-go cables that are usually associated with phones. If you want to um, connect a flash drive to your phone which doesn't have the USB port, so you can connect the OTG cable first and then plug in your flash drive. So that's what the OTG cable is used for. You have your screen guard, which is usually for us associated with phones. The Infinix is a phone and biscuits. Remember, it's a mall. So you expect that at some point, people who come into that mall will want to eat. So you can decide to also get one or two um, snacks and then um, beverage and that will fill up your canteen section. So that is what we have done. We have succeeded in doing the serial number, 10 names of products, assigning them sections and giving them the appropriate IDs. Now the next is to under quantity supplied, which is this quantity supplied, enter the following, which should correspond to the serial numbers one to eight. Okay, in my case, I'm using one to eight, but remember I told you from the start, one to 10. So I've done one to eight. Now, when instructions are given, remember in these other ones, there was no instruction. So you do whatever you like. But now instructions have been given. You have to put the exact values into them, like corresponding to serial number one to eight. Now you see, we're no longer using row number because we can't say row number one to eight. If we say row number one to eight, it means the instruction is starts from here to enter 20. But we are using serial number one so you use your serial number one not your row number take that into consideration serial number one so serial number one should correspond to 20 serial number two should co correspond to five as here and serial number eight should correspond to 100 so this is instruction you need to follow it exactly how it was stated under unit purchase costs Enter the following, which should correspond to serial number one to eight. Another instruction that must be adhered to. Under unit purchase costs, so this is unit purchase costs. Good. Under unit purchase costs, you should enter the following. Serial number one to eight should correspond to this. So the first one under unit purchase cost is hundred thousand, and that's what we have here. The next one seventy thousand, and that's what we have here. And the last one there is 50 naira and that's what we have here remember i told you how you can attach this naira sign under the data type currency and then you select naira sign that's how we did this from the last class i'm sure you remember that good the next question is now saying that under unit price enter the following which should correspond to the serial number one to eight good so this is the amount this is assume this is the amount you went to buy um, this um, product in bulk now how much do you intend to sell them now this is the unit selling price and they also gave you the instruction on what and what to use 120,000 80,000 14,000 and then 100 naira so that is it so you enter it following the instruction 
1 to correspond to this and 8 to correspond to 100. Good. Now, having done all this, the next question here is now find now find the quantity not so quantity not so now this column contains the quantity so we have 10 this this could be a random number since the instruction wasn't given now what you are told to find is the quantity not so which is this the quantity not so good now quantity not so what is the formula to do this if you were to write it on paper? Quantity not sold. It has to be quantity supplied, quantity supplied minus quantity sold. The number supplied minus the number that has been that you have sold already, and that will give you the quantity not sold. Remember that every formula begins with equal sign. So I'll type in equal to, and then the cell reference of the quantity supplied is on E3. I'll type in E3 minus the cell reference of the quantity sold, which is H3. H here, and then 3 here. H3. Now, enter. Good. The answer is 10. So, if you do it manually, 20 minus 10 will give you 10. Now, you can use your fill down to do the rest. So, you can use your fill down to do the rest. Or, you use your fill handle, which is move your cursor to this edge. And when you do that, the, the cursor sign changes so once it changes you can hold down your left click button on the mouse and then drag down to the last one there good you see that it has filled it 5 minus 3 is 2 30 minus 20 is 10 and then 100 minus 50 is 50 so i've succeeded in doing this remember how i filled down i can use the fill down option to enter the remaining values of this or I go down to the edge, just go down to the edge of this active cell where you see something like a box, move the cursor there and then it changes the sign. Hold down your left click, left button of the mouse and then drag down to cover the areas you need to calculate for. Now the, the computer will automatically do the necessary calculations. Now, the next question is total amount sold. Total amount sold. Now, for you to do that, this, remember that this is the selling price and this is the quantity sold. So, how much was sold is what they are requesting for. So, to do this, the normal mathematics formula is to say the unit selling price minus the unit selling price multiplied by the quantity sold. That will give you your total amount sold. Now, to do this, you have to use the formula which is equal to the cell reference of the the cell reference of this cell of the cell reference of 120,000 which is G3 and then the cell reference of the quantity sold which is H3 so if you look at this that was the formula used G3 and H3 and there are two ways to do this you either put product in front which will tell the computer that you are multiplying if you don't want to use the product in front then you have to remove the product in front and in place of this comma in place of the comma here you delete it and type in star so star is the sign this asterisk sign is the is a, is a multiplication sign so if i remove this product if i delete this product here and then use g asterisk h i will get the same answer if i with when i went with um, the person who used equal to product G3, comma, and H3. They will give you the same answer. So that's it. 1,200,000 Naira. I'm getting 1,200,000 Naira. Now, if I use Ctrl Z and where you have the product with the commas, you will see that I got, I will get the same thing. See that I will get the same thing. 1,200,000 Naira. So after doing that, you use your fill down. The fill handle, this is called the fill handle. You use the fill handle to drag down and you get the other values of the cells. Okay, so now the next question is what was the percentage of money you made, that's your profit, after you have removed your cost price? So that's what percentage profit is all about. So to do that, you have to say um, the selling price 
the selling price minus the cost price divided by the cost price. To do that, you enter the formulas here. And how do you do that? Equal to, remember every formula begins with the equal sign. Now, you can open a bracket. Look at, look at, the, look at, look at where I'm pointing at. You can open the first bracket, then open the second one. Now, what's the implication of opening the first and the second? Now, this second covers for this to this. So, I can comfortably remove this first bracket and then for, me to, for it to make sense or to be balanced mathematically, I have to remove this last bracket. So, it's either I'm removing the first and the last bracket or I'm adding the first, add the first and then add the back. This is normal board mass. So, what the computer will do is to subtract F3 from G3 and then divide it with F3. So, I can remove this. Remember, what we got is 20%. So, let me readjust this formula by removing this and then removing this. You see, we still get the same thing, 20%. So, what's the formula we use? G3, which is the selling price, minus F3, which is the cost price, divided by F3, which is the cost price. Now, for you to comfortably get this 20%, you have to highlight the whole of this colon and ensure that the data type under number is percentage. So you have to put this percentage so that the percent sign will appear properly. If not, then you have to multiply whatever you got from the, the um, subtraction division by 100. So you have to multiply whatever you got by 100. But if you are using this percentage, then there is no need to doing that because this percent at the back implies that it has been multiplied by 100. Okay, so you simply say this minus this divided by this and ensure that the cells concerned are in the data type percent. So when they are in the data type percent, you will get what you need as 20. So I can draw this to fill down and get the rest. Good. So now, why is this 100%? It's 100% because I bought this at 50 Naira and I'm selling it times 2, which is 100 Naira. Remember, this is an ICT mall, so there may be need for this comment column. There may be need for this comment column where you write one or two things you notice so that it will help a smooth running of the, the mall. Good. Like here, you have two left. Two left. So anybody who looks at this will say, ah, two. We have just two. So when next we are going to the market, we have to add this to one of the things we will use to stock up. Good. Because you have, you have supplied five, you sold three, and um, two, not yet sold. So two left. Now, for the second, you have supplied 13, you sold five, and eight is left. You can also write on the comment section that this eight are damaged. So if there is need for you to return the eight to the um, to the warehouse, that's where you bought it from, rather, you return it. If there is no, if you can't return it, then you know that you need to stock up. Now, when you have out of stock, it means the product has been exhausted. Now, fifty expired. Now you have hundred that was supplied. You have paid. You have sold fifty already, and then the remaining fifty. Why did you not sell it? You did not sell it because. They are expired products. So these are reasons why you may have to keep that comment section. So now let's do this to put the tab formula. If I click on this, you see show formulas. So when I click on this show formula, every cell that has a formula inside it will show up. So like this, you don't know which of them have formulas, which of them have formulas, but merely you click show formulas, every one of them appears. So under serial number, we don't have formulas there. We don't have formulas here. We don't have formulas here. We don't have formulas here. So we will scroll down and try to figure out where we we'll have formulas. Good. You see that under quantity not sold, the values entered there were done using formulas. That is, it wasn't manually entered. It was entered using formulas. You also have the product. You also have the amount sold where we did product. You also see that it was formulas that was used to do that calculation. You have your percentage, it was formulas that was used to calculate that. And so, somebody can ask you, which of the colons contain formulas? Which of the colons 
was formula used to calculate the value. So once you click on this show formula, you'll be able to find all the columns and tell them you have columns on one, two, three, three columns and their names are quantity not sold. The names of the column label are quantity not sold, quantity quantity not sold, amount sold, and percentage, and they are on the colon headers I, J, and then K. I, J, and then K. So that's it about show formulas. However, I can also decide to, let's hide that. However, I can also decide to make these calculations not automated. So if you don't want it to be automated, you have under the calculation group, you have calculations. So uh, instead of Auto automatic you change it to what manual it is automatic now it is automatic so and 20 minus 10 remember this has formula this has formula and this has formula 20 percent now if i change any value here this will be autom or, um, updated this will be updated and this will also be updated because it's done automatically so let's change this to 15 assuming 15 was sold you move down you see that five is left five is left this also applies to this chart this also applies to the chart we're coming to chart but just observe what will happen here there will be, there will be a shift or a change now if i change this to 15 five is here one million eight hundred thousand naira and this is still 20 percent you will observe there is a shift here for those who paid um, attention to that good i can we undo that and then change this to manual. Change it to manual. Now, if I change this to 15, nothing is changing. It's still 10, it's still this, it's still this. So, for me to tell the computer, okay, I finished my changes, now apply the up, up, update my sheet, I can click on calculate sheet and you see the, if the, the change has been effected. It's now automatic. Okay, the manual now. Now, let's say this is 10, I change it to 10, I've changed it to 10, 20 minus 10 should be 10, but it's still working with the previous score. So if I now click on calculate sheet, you see that this will adjust, this will adjust. So calculate sheet, it has adjusted. Now, ensure that this is also on manual, I will now change it to 20. Let's say 20, I've changed it to 20, meaning that this should be zero, and this should be up updated so it's not working because it's still on manual so i can click on calculate now and it will work so but calculate now will calculate for the entire workbook meaning that if you calculate for you know i have how many tabs open here one two three four five six calculate now we calculate for the entire workbook so whatever if changes you have made in the entire workbook it will be also Whatever changes you made here, made here, made here, made here, they will all be um, updated once you click on calculate now. But calculate sheet will only calculate the changes in the current worksheets you are on. So if I'm on this worksheet, the more, whatever changes I have made, if I click on calculate worksheet, it will only affect this. But if I have made changes in various other worksheets and I click on calculate now, then Every of this worksheet, the entire workbook, remember that a workbook is made up of collection of worksheets, will be all updated. So that is it. I will take it back to manual and then take this back to 10. Good. So that is it. Now let's now talk about inserting charts, pictures, text box, headers, and footer. Inserted. So we are now on the insert tab. This is the insert tab. So you click on this, you have your insert tab, okay? Now, let me also expand this so that we can see better. We're talking about inserting. So you click on the insert tab. So now, how did I insert this pie chart? How did I insert this pie chart? Now I'm going to delete it so that we'll do it again and see how many of us will follow. Now, simply you highlight this. Because you want the names to be attached to the what you are working on and then let's say you attach the percentage so you want to know how many how much percentage profit you made on this product now to how did i do this thing I, to highlight the first you do it normal as click on 
the first you can click on the first scroll down the shift button and then tap your direction your arrow buttons or you simply use the the mouse to drag that and you get this now to do the other while still holding this selection you have to hold down the control key on the keyboard hold down the control key on the keyboard while you're holding that down you select the next area you need good so i've selected the name of the product and then the percentage profit now i'll go to the insert tab which i'm already on on the group charts on the group chart you see the round this is pie chart so you click on it and select whatever um, um type you want you can use the one that looks like a donut you can use this you can use this you can use this you can use this whichever so i prefer to use this so that's it so i've gotten my i've gotten my pie chart good now however what you are seeing here the labels are represented by colors so it means that the green is for the screen guard the yellow is for the scanner so this is it but you can actually make it easier for identification by going down to your quick layout and then look for the one that fits well good like this now you see that if i go to this the um, percentage and the products are now on the colors so you can uh, let's go through the others this one shows just the percentage on the colors and the products are outside but they are linked by the color you with the color you be able to identify them so this one shows just the products without the percentage and this one shows both the percentage and the product just like this shows the percentage and the product but the difference between these two is that this one shows more of them on the pie chart why this one is more of labeling out so i think i would prefer to use um this or this which one do we use okay let's use layout four good so that's it you have succeeded in drawing your pie chart like laptop has 20 percent so if you look for laptop you see the percent 20. the scanner has 50 percent you look for scanner 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 and then you have 50 percent so that is one way or that's a way you can represent your um, figures using the pie chart now somebody can also tell you to insert or produce a bar chart this these are bar charts produce a bar chart that will enable you to compare the quantity supplied and the quantity sold that's where you now know okay have i sold all have i not sold all and all that so you that's what this graph gives you now you see that 20 here is the 20 let's go up a little is the 20 for this is laptop that's the first one laptop 20 was supplied and 10 was sold now for the iphone 5 was supplied and 3 was sold so how do we get this so i will remove this again so that we'll start from the beginning first of all you highlight this which is the name of the product hold down your control highlight the quantity supplied why still holding down the control you highlight the quantity sold now you see that i have selected the um, the areas i want and the values i want to be represented in my his, in my bar chart then you go to the insert remember we're talking about the insert tab go to um on that charts you can this is this is this one is pointing this direction but we don't want to use that and this one is pointing northwest you have different variation you have the 3d I think I prefer to use the 3D. Now, what do you mean by 3D? It gives it a kind of, um, makes it attractive. You see the X, the Y, and the Z uh, axis. But here, you just see only two dimensions. So I would prefer to use this. Good. So this is it. Click on this, and I have my bar chart. Now, it's not looking that fine. So under the chart style, under the chart style, while this is still selected, you can then play with whichever one you want to use. You can use this. You can also decide to use this, which is the one I used earlier. So you can use this on that side. Then if I don't want these grid lines, I can click on it and delete them and they go off. So it becomes a very clean graph. However, let's leave it there so that it will be easier for us to trace one or two things. Good. So you see now that I have blue 
here shows the quantity supplied as seen by this the, le the legend and the yellow or the orange color rather shows quantity sold so laptops we have 20 okay you see that this is also not showing the value so we can then go to layouts and then look for this okay very good so we'll select this this will make it easier what did i do why this is still selected go to quick layout and then pick the one that um, you prefer so i prefer this so that the values will be easy for me to read out now laptop 20 supplied 20 supplied 10 sold 10 sold click so you can simply drag it's covering your text so you can move you see the top see how the the cursor is if i move it to um, this you have the four arrowheads pointing to a different direction now hold this down the left click button and then drag it out of the place so with this you'll be able to plot your graph plot your charts and then do your um, analysis from here now you see that it's easier for me to explain this than using this since it's here i'll just say we bought laptop of 20 we bought 20 pieces of laptop and we have sold 10. so automatically you should know the remaining left okay we have inserted the chart now let's insert a picture let's insert a picture and see how it looks like now the picture can help add a small effect so what you have done for example if this is a shopping um, since this is an ict based mall you can decide to add a picture close to somewhere here let's, let's go to insert you go to pictures now you go to the location where you save that file then type in the file name okay this is it uh, then i'll click on insert now uh, this is the picture i want to use to represent the laptop so i can just put this here and i want to save the laptops that were supplied with this 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 now with this it adds a a kind of beauty the same way you can drag it over to this but i think this is nice so you see that you can make the spreadsheets very um interesting and you appreciate it even better so that's how you can insert pictures now now let's see how we can insert a text box a text box that is actually easy go to your insert okay then this is text box text box if there is something a comment i think it's very necessary i need to add i can click on that and then you see the cursor has changed drag it and then type in um this is just for June or this analysis is just for June. June. So let's stop there and I like the centralize. So the others are normal Microsoft effect. You can increase the size and this is your text box. So that text box you can also add it here you can also add it here so these are all things possibilities depending on what the user needs to achieve so you can insert your chat you can insert your pictures you can insert text box so now the next question is data processing student assessment sheets data processing student assessment sheets in the table, enter various names of students, assign them with various classes, type in random scores for them in the first test, second test and project, and then exam. Then using formula, calculate the average total and position. I've done that here, data processing assessment sheets. This is looking a little clumsy, so I will highlight everything here and then use text wrap, text wrap so that it adjusts. So good, now we can see everything. Initially, it was looking very clumsy, registration number, the colon width wasn't wide enough or is not wide enough, so I'll adjust it so that I can see everything good. So with this now, I can see a, I can see moderately all I need to get from there. So the question is now, type in names of students, assign them classes just like you have done here, and assign them, type in random scores for the first test, the mid-test, the project, the exam, the, then you now find Total, find average, and then find position. Find total, find average, and then find position. Okay, this is actually very easy. We have done things like this before. 
So let's, we have done things like this before. So let me just jump into answering them. First of all, you can do the total by highlighting all this, highlighting the required, then you go to auto sum and then click on sum and the value comes there. Or you type in the formula itself equal to sum, open a bracket, the cell reference of that is on D, D3, the cell reference of um, the first test of AK per liter is D3. So I will simply type in D3 colon because it's a range. Remember what I said about colon and comma? It's a range colon G3. So I'll type in G3. Close the brackets and then hit the enter. Good. So this is the sum. I will, to get the other score, remember I will use the field handle or since I've used that before, I will highlight this then go to fill and then click on down highlight this the required areas you need to calculate for go to fill and then click on down now you see that formulas have been used to do the others the other one the other way i said you go to the fill handle using the fill handle you drag it down you see we have 82 and then 55. now the same way you calculate for the average equal to average okay open the brackets D3 colon and then G3. Good. See if you if you do it very well, the cells required will be highlighted. You close it the bracket and then hit enter. Now you can also use the same fill down handle to drag down or you highlight and then press down to fill for the other. So this is the average you can get. Now the position. This is the formula for position equal to rank I3. I3. This is I3. I3. We are, we are, work, we are using the average position, the average um, values to calculate the position. So the average is on I and the first value there is on 3. So I'll type in I3. So it depends on where your average is. If your average is here, you use G3. If your average is here, you use H3. But since my average is on I, I use I3. Then put a comma, dollar sign. Somebody asked me absolute referencing and um, what's the difference between absolute referencing and re relative referencing. Now, this is an absolute reference. You can't adjust it. You can't copy it. You can't paste it. And if anything happens to the values that make up this, it's in, in that, that, that's the end of that particular column. So you use dollar sign, which is an absolute reference symbol. You dollar I, dollar three colon is the color sign you put this dollar sign again it's like a dollar sign colon is a range because you, are, you want to do from the first to the last so dollar i which is the same i here of the average dollar three colon dollar i again dollar twelve that's the last row on that on the last row that you want to work with so that's why you have 12 here 12 because this is 12 so if it extends to 18 you have to extend this towards 18 good so after doing that i click on close your bracket and click on enter you will have what two now i will drag this down to get the position for the orders so that's how you can play around with the position now we have another formula we want to work on the maximum and the minimum somebody can ask you the total score who has what is not who has what is the highest value within the scores of the students within their total score what is the highest value and if this was larger than 12 probably you had like um, 100 students in your in your list how do you easily figure out who is the highest so you use the maximum function how do you do that equal to maximum h3 h3 because is on colon we are doing that for colon um h that's under the total now if somebody wants to say well, the highest score in exam instead of using colon h you use what colon what g so because we are working on the colon h we'll have h3 the value the first value on total is on three if you trace it here so h3 colon h12 that's the last value here h still on h12 now if you do that and hit your enter key you should have 82 now the same way you 
fit maximum. That's the same way you do minimum. Minimum gives you the lowest value in that range, in the selected range. So instead of maximum, which you have here, MAX, for minimum, you simply change it to MIN, minimum, and that's it. All right, let's move to our question. Using sort function, rearrange the position. Using sort function, rearrange the position from the smallest to the largest. So you want to have the highest person down to the lowest person. So you simply come to this the position, click on any of the values, it could be 4, it could be 5. And when you have done that, good, under the sort and filter, you click on sort and filter, and then you see smallest to largest. So when you click on it, everything rearranges from first to last. So the first person got an average of 20 with a total score of 82, while the last person, which is position 10, got an average of 13.75 and a, a total score of 55. So that is how you see that we have automatically rearranged all this within a, a snap of the fingers. We have rearranged it. Now, if we take it back to where it is, see that the, the ninth position was Onyemechi Paul. Onyemechi Paul here has the ninth position. So when you still rearrange it, the person retains this position. So you don't think things got messed up. So if you check the ninth position, you still have Onyemechi Paul. And Onyemechi, this. Okay, this colon is looking tight, so I will expand it so that we we'll see it very good. Onyemechi, Onyebuchi, Obidiego got the highest position. So that's how you can use the sorts to rearrange your scores from the highest to the lowest. Okay, now, remember I also told you how you can um, use the filter. I also told you how you can use the filter. If you want to, for example, under this total, I can add the filter. Let's just do a recap. I can add the filter. Good. And then let's say I want to bring out only those who got 70 and above. You click on the drop down arrow. Go to number filter. And I want to use equal to and greater than. E greater than or equal to. So I want to use greater than or equal to or type in 70. Those who got 70 and above. Now when you hit the OK button, you see that everything here is within 70, 71, 72, 73, 75, and 80. Every other thing has been um, hidden. So that's it on how you can use the sort and the filter. We have done that before. This is just take this as a revision. Let's do the last one, which is using this to solve a quadratic equation. Using this to solve a quadratic equation. Good. How do we do that? Now, this is a typical table of value. This is a typical table of value. A typical table of value. Now, the, the question is for solve for y equal to when y is equal to minus 4x squared plus x plus 2.5. So when you do this, you should be able to get a table that looks like this. Now, how do you now use this table to plot this graph? So, so I've simply highlight this, highlight the table of frequency, which you already got. Go to insert. Now go to scatter. On that chart, you go to scatter and then select curve, the curve good, something like this. So when you click on this, uh, if you don't want dots, you use this, but if you want your dots to be, your points to be represented, you use this. So this is a quadratic graph. You can also use this to solve a quadratic equation. Remember, let me go to the presentation. You will see that the quadratic equation has the formula x minus b plus square root of b square minus 4ac over 2a. So this is for one value of x. And this is for another value of x. The signs are just plus here and minus here. That's the difference. So I can use that to solve this. Good. Remember, a quadratic equation, you have your a, which is your value for the, um, for the x, the one with x squared. The coefficients of x squared is for this. The coefficients of just x is b. And your constant is c. OK, this is simply from the one we did before. a is minus 4 b is 1 and c is 2.5 just like we have in this graph a here let me increase that good a here is minus 4 
B is 1 and C is 2.5. So that's exactly what we have here. Bring out the coefficients. And when you do that, you simply put your x, your first value of x and your second value of x. Good. Now, C is enter this formula in the formula bar equal to minus B2. Why are you saying B2? B2 is because B here is located on B. The value for B here is on B2. So you say minus in place of B, B is on B2, which is 1, plus this is square root, as the functions for square root, B squared, B2 raised to the power of 2, that is this B, that's B squared now, B squared now is, our value is B1, that is B2 raised to the power of 2, which is B squared, then minus 4AC. Remember, our A, value for A is on B1, and our value for C is on B3. So that's why you're having B1, that's 4 times B1, which is for A, times B, times C, which is B3. And you divide, divide this by 2, B1, and B1 is our A. So that's this. So when you do that, close your bracket and hit the enter key, you will have this. So this will actually, now if the value is 0. 0. Um, six seven you do for the second one all you need to change here is this plus sign this plus sign the plus here b square plus b2 plus square root you change it to minus so it will be b2 minus square root now once you do that and hit your enter key you will have these two values now let's compare these two values with a graph now you see that x has negative value of zero point less than zero point seven approximately so if you go to the graph now, see that here it's close, it's close to 0 0.7. So if this is 0 0.5, and somewhere here is 0 0.6, somewhere here can be 0 0.7, somewhere here 8, somewhere here 9, and then this. So this is actually correct, 0 0.7. Now, the positive value you have 0 0.9. So if you go there, you see that this is also correct as 0 0.9. This is the line for 1, so it's not here to 1, so it's around 0 0.9. So this is how you can actually use this to solve your quadratic equation without having um, issues. So you can plot your graph and you can get your two values of x using spreadsheet. That was why I told you you can use this to solve even more complex problems. Let's do inserting the header and the footer. Remember, we are still on the insert tab and we are going to insert the header and the footer and then we'll wrap it up for today. Now to insert the header, this is my work. I will go to insert. This header simply means um, for you to use a header, it means you want that particular text you have on the header to appear on all the pages of your work. So if this work is going to extend to 100 pages, it means that whatever I type in on the header should appear on the 100 pages. You can be asked in your exam to apply the header to this. So, under the insert, under the group text, you see header and footer. Click on header, click on it, and good. You have the header here on page two. You also have a header here on page one. So I can say on the header, type in, um, let's say, what do we call this now? Assessment. Let's say assessment. Good. You see now that the assessment will appear here, as well as here, page one and page two. So you can apply any formatting to it. They can tell you to make it bold. You can say you should use font um, 26 and so on. It applies to the two. Good. Now, after applying the header, the next thing is to apply your footer. Next thing is to apply your footer. So you do that and then go to footer. So the footer can be page number. So let's call it page number, page number one. So the footer can be page number. So you see that the header, we have assessment, and the footer, we have page number. More of what they may ask you to do will be working with the header. I believe you should now be able to write formulas, plot graphs, turn on the automatic calculation option and turn it off, then show formulas. Now you should be able to insert your charts, your pictures, your text box, and the headers and footer. You should also be able to use formulas to um, solve questions. Example, like the quadratic equation we did today, 
with this formula, you solve the class of quadratics. You can also employ other formulas and use them to solve various formulas, uh, various questions using this um, idea we used with the quadratic equation. Uh, that's all we can take for today. Thank you very much for listening. Keep learning. Bye.